So a while ago, I put out a video called uh, The Blue Belt Mindset, and people have been asking me, Bill, good video. What's the Purple Belt Mindset? My name is Bill Jones. I'm the head instructor of Top Level Martial Arts in beautiful downtown Cuyahoga Falls. Coming at you from my car today. I'm a black belt under Master Pedro Sauer. You're watching Professor's Corner. Thanks for watching. Um, you know, what's your mind? What, what, what if you're if you're someone who's achieved the rank of, of purple belt or beyond? Like, what did you notice changed as you as you about your mindset specifically as you uh, kind of went through the ranks and everything? I, I want to know what what happened with you. Um, but anyway, getting getting back to the topic. So, purple belt mindset. Like, what what do I see as changes? Now, let, let me start by just saying. Guys, these are broad generalizations, right? Like, certain people get good at certain things at certain times, and, and that's just the way kind of life is, right? No, pe no two people are the same. So these are different, definite gradients. Like, I don't think the change from white belt to blue belt or blue belt to purple belt is like, you're a white belt, you're a white belt, boom. You're a blue belt, you're a blue belt, boom, right? Other than the date that you put that belt on, right? That would be the definite change. Uh, but as far as, like, how your mindset is, the way your skill set is, it doesn't just, I can't do arm bars, boom, now I can do arm bars, boom, now I can do arm bars better, like, it doesn't work that way, it's like a slow change, sometimes to the point that you don't notice it. So let me tell you, let me start with this story, um, when I started getting on jujitsu forums and stuff, I don't even know if forums are still a thing now that there's like Facebook groups and stuff like that, but when I started getting on, fa on, on forums, um, one of the things that they always had was a handle, and so I always had my handle, and then it had like a tagline underneath it, so like you'd say something cool, and what I always said was, you know, I just, I kept getting my ass kicked until one day I wasn't getting my ass kicked anymore, and I think that's, that to me is like when you're definitely a purple belt, um, or, or ready for purple belt maybe, depending on how certain people look at it, um, and so the first thing that I notice is that purple belts, typically, um, when someone new walks in the door, purple belts can handle them. Um, whether they're, you know, and that's, that's a, again, a generalization. Mark Schultz walks through the door. You're lucky if any black belt can handle him. But, like, we're talking about average people walking through the door, big, strong guys, uh, little fast guys. doesn't really matter. The purple belt's going to be able to tap that person and, and handle them. Um they have a, a enough of a grasp on how to maintain people and have enough of a game plan built that they can steer people into a specific game plan when those people, especially people who don't know what they're doing. And certainly you know, some people are out there, hey, you know, as a blue belt, I was able to, great, that's wonderful for you. I'm saying on the whole, this is where purple belt starts in my mind. That's one of the, the major things. Um, and, and, it's kind of like what I said, like you, you just realize one day that you're not getting your ass kicked anymore. Um, the second thing that I think a purple belt has is a very good grasp of fundamental mechanics of jujitsu um, to the point that they could teach fundamental classes. And what I mean by that is, is that they, they understand how to hip escape. They understand when to hip escape. They understand, uh, fundamental methods of passing the guard. Now they may not be, you know, for example, I'm under master Pedro Sauer and I can tell you that as a, as currently, as I said, I'm a second degree black belt. Every time I see master Sauer teach passing the guard, I learn something new. Like every time I see him teach anything. So I'm not saying they're at that level, but my point is they can take someone who knows nothing and show them correctly how to do the basic mechanics of these things. Um, do they understand it in depth? Do they understand you know, what to do if the grab is here versus here versus here? Maybe, maybe not. Depends on their game. But they're going to be able to take someone through that. Now, I know a lot of blue belts typically think they can do that. And some of you might be right. But what I am going to say is that in a lot of cases, blue belts don't have the level of knowledge when it comes to the what ifs. Like, so you can... You can regurgitate the move um, usually pretty well, but typically if it's like, yeah, but what if I push you here? Blue belts don't usually have that answer. Uh, not especially like broad enough to be teaching classes. Um, and if, if you do, 
awesome. Great job on you. Way to go above and beyond. I'm not trying to insult anybody here. But uh, purple belts definitely have a lot of those answers. Um, especially when it comes to the basic movements. Now, the next thing that I notice about purple belts. So, so one, they typically are able to handle a brand new person. Two, they typically have the knowledge to uh, help instruct uh, newer people. The one thing that I do notice that this causes, though, is a little bit of arrogance. Almost every purple belt I train with, and they don't mean it as ego. They don't, they don't mean to come off as egotistical. They're very polite people, but they, they know. It's, it's kind of like they, the first time they become self-aware. Think about it like this. Have you ever had like a little kid tell a joke? And like everybody laughs at the joke and they're like, ah, ha, ha, that was funny. And then like the kid just keeps telling the joke over and over again. Like he doesn't understand that like, yeah, that was funny when you first told it. But when you tell the same joke over and over again, it's not funny anymore. Like it's kind of like the purple belt has truly become self-aware that they are a, a tough human being and quite often feel the need to remind people of that. Uh, it, and not an ego, they're like they don't try to hurt people. They, they, I'm not saying it that way, but like they just they're, they they realize that they know stuff and can have intelligent conversations about jujitsu with people who are skilled at jujitsu and like want to butt in their information all the time or or it, like I hope that makes sense. So that's something that I notice about purple belts. Uh, again, generalization, not all. Some people, I mean, I know some purple belts who never open their damn mouth. They just sit there, they learn class, they're like, yep, 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 gonna do it. But I wrote an article not too long ago that I called Purple Beltitis, and one of the things I cited in it was that purple belt is typically when you see people start like coming in a little later and maybe skipping the, the, the warm up movements, um, you know, stuff like that. They'll lay out on the mat like Burt Reynolds. Like that's when they start getting really comfortable in their skin in jujitsu. Um, so these are the things I notice about purple belts. Um, now, as a, as a purple belt, what should you focus on? You need to focus on building your game. And this is the next part that I wanted to talk about. Like as a purple belt, you probably have one, two, maybe three moves that you can hit most people with, right? Like I remember uh, one of my, he's a black belt now, but Nate, Nate August, um, when he was first getting really good with the triangle choke, it was right around mid purple. I realized, oh, his triangle choke's dangerous. That's a, like, if he catches me with this, I'm probably going to get tapped. And uh, he, he might even have got his first tap on me, like legit tap at, at when he was a purple belt. And, um, y- you know, that that's like, that's, that's what you realize. So the next thing that happens is as a, you know, at the time I, w- I was a black belt. So I said, okay, I'm just never getting in his guard again. And I'm going to force him to get better because of it. Because like, if he's just hoping that guard, that, that one submission is going to get him by till black belt, he's, he's got another thing coming. So like, it's like, okay, cool. You like, you know, now I'm going to force him to, to learn ways to force me into his guard, to funnel me into his guard. Uh, he's going to learn ways to, uh, you know, transition when I, when I don't let him have the guard, he's going to have to learn, uh, you know, how to, how to set up taking the back and how to do the rest of the stuff. And that's typically at purple belt when you start to get forced to do things that are outside your comfort zone. Um, you know, an, another, uh, guy that I have, he's a purple belt now. And he, you know, we, we were working on some reverse daily Hiva concepts, which, um, reverse daily Hiva in my mind is mainly like a quick, quick way to go to, to quickly stop the, the uh, inside knee or the, the, the knee pass, the knee slice, the baseball pass, whatever you call it. And uh, it, like I go there and then I go immediately back to, to more of a, uh, I, I'm more of like a collar sleeve kind of guy. Um, and I remember him, him, like I was showing these concepts and I was showing some of the other concepts that, you know, because I have littler guys that like to spin underneath, kiss of the dragon type stuff. And, but I was showing him that and he was like, okay, wait, I think I get it now. Like I, I was so uncomfortable before, but now I get it. Like I can go here the minute they stop trying that pass, I can switch back and go to this. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly right. And he's like, I got it. Like, and, and that's where I think the bulk of your learning is done. Uh, as far as like stuff that immediately applies to you is at purple belt, because you know, a lot of moves now at blue belt, you're just learning a bunch of moves. Right. And, and like, picking the ones you like and, and trying new things. But like at purple belts, when you're really looking for techniques that 100% connect to your game 
and it's it's like oh man you know I, I can't get I, you know Bill keeps stopping my triangle choke what can I do next um, so that's the next thing that I I, I see uh, a lot in in that purple belt is, is exploring new types of guards new games so that um, your your game grows that by the time you you get to brown belt you are essentially a black belt at the the, the six seven moves that you're good at um, or the six seven positions that you're good at like maybe you have a great triangle position and you've got like you know four or five things you do off of that like they defend this way I go to this they defend that way I go to that you, you know but like by the time you're a brown belt, you've got a great triangle position with, with lots of options. You, maybe you've got a great armbar position with lots of options if they defend. Maybe you've got uh, a great, uh, you know, mount with, with collar grips position. You know, and notice that I'm, I'm talking about positions in, like, micro position here. I'm not talking about position as, like, guard, side control, mount. Like, I believe there's micro positions here that, that, that you learn to control. And... Uh, you know, this is where I believe the purple belt lives. So that to me is like the purple belt mindset uh, that, that's required to both get there and then also to start transitioning into brown belt. Um, I hope that's helpful, guys. Again, what are your thoughts on this? What do you think, uh, you know, what, what do you remember when from when you went from like blue to purple or purple to brown that really changed in your mindset? I'd love to hear it. I'll talk to you later. Have a great one.